Um, I'll call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, this is a, a meeting of the Rules Committee of the Representative Town Meeting Barry Ann. And uh, to help out a fellow member of the Rules Committee, uh, without objection, I, I would move uh, uh, Jack Davis to the top if he had a couple of remarks before he has to go to the F&B meeting. Yes, I, I want to thank you, Seth. We, we have a slew of people downstairs as this is our budget night. Um, I, I did want to talk about... Um, it's not me. It may be me. <laughs> it may have been me. Who knows? Um, it's that's my tone. Okay. I, I did want to go through a couple things on the agenda and just explain this is a very unique budget year. Um, first of all, similar to the Board of Ed, we're now, it was Kate's budget um, instead of going to the department chair, so all the follow-up was done through Kate as the town administrator, then became the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen budget. Once they hand it off to the Board of Finance, it's now the Board of Finance's budget that they're handing off to us, and F&B is the liaison for anything coming in from the Board of Finance. Um, some of the uniqueness are is that there was a change in policy last year where we don't do the million dollar drawdown and we used a new rate to calculate what our collection rate is, um, which we'll cover um, in the meeting. There's also a change in the fund balance policy, which based upon certain efficiencies is resulting in a $500,000 um, payment for certain capital, which is consistent with that policy. Um, so when you're looking at it, don't worry about it, it's consistent. Um, there is detail, um, contrary to what was said um, in the letter to the editor, there is significant detail on Highland Farms. We're gonna be covering that tonight in the meeting. Um, there is also a $3 million um, architect for Oxford School. I wanna remind everyone that all school building committees, and some of you actually know this having served on them, is a town committee, not a school one. The Board of Ed gave over their education specs, I believe in September of last year, to the Board of Selectmen. So just keep that in mind. Unfortunately, due to how we're going to be moving through this um, process, we're not gonna have the same um, information that we had in improving the total appropriation that we had in the public works only because we need to get it in under the June 30th and it could mean significant funds to the town of Darien and so therefore rather than losing those funds since we get very little it's important that that moves through the other thing is, is that there is some advantage because there was some savings on the reserve fund analysis that we'll also be doing in June. Um, and we're preparing slides, like we did last year, but Kate, Jen, and I are working on better slides than what we had. We're also changing the focus. We're moving away from the mill rate because it's a meaningless number, even though that determines what our taxes are, especially in a reval year where the grand list went down by 1.36%. If I really look at what was requested and what we're paying out of the general fund, less our revenues, because the Board of Selectmen isn't net, the amount that we're having to raise through taxes is really the key number. And that only went up by 1.17% over the prior year's request. When we add back the bonding and the special appropriation, the total request from the two boards for what we'll be spending, either through bond or through taxes um, or through appropriation, is up only one and a quarter percent this year, which is really outstanding. Our mill rate is up higher simply because the denominator changed. So we're going to start to focus more on going forward, year to year, what we're raising through taxes. So that's something else to expect to see. Other than that, um, I got to go back down. That. What? My cousin will be thrilled with that. He hates the whole idea of the mill rate. He's like, it's such a meaningless care. number. It is a meaningless <laughs> number. But, you know, it takes time to make changes. 
And so this is something that Jen, Kate, and I had been talking about, and it's a good year to do it with the, with the rebound year. I also hate saying this is what the average tax on a million dollar home, because some people who have had those million dollar homes went up by 10% and some went down. So, you know, I think this is a much better way to do it and I need to go and get my committee now to agree with that approach. Right before you go, you mentioned uh, that the new school project would be a town project rather than a board of education project. It always has been a town project. The, ta so, the town builds the buildings. So what are the pitfalls involved in that uh, distinction? What are the things that we need to watch out for? It, it really, <laughs> there is none. Value engineering. Yeah, the, yeah. the thing is, is it's value engineering, but from what I understand, and I haven't been to any of those meetings, but you have a very good group. You have Duke from the Board of Ed, you have Kip, who's um, running it from the Board of Selectmen, John Zagroski's on it, and he's been very straight that we're not value engineering things out. He's said that at multiple RTM meetings. You also have uh, Randy... Um, Schreiner. Rusty Schreiner. Rusty Schreiner, thank you. Who I believe um, did Middlesex. 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 And um, I know I know Rusty, I just don't know from where. Um, and it wasn't from Middlesex. But he comes... He served on a prior one, didn't he? Somewhere yeah, Middlesex. 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 Yeah, Middlesex. Yeah. So, I mean, those are just some of the members. And so it's Very a really good mm -hmm. team. Um, and as I said, the Board of Ed has handed over their specs. Now it's working with such things as the Board of, the State Board of Ed requires um, 900 square foot for a classroom. So you have to start meeting that. The other thing, just very briefly, is even if this costs, as John Zagroski said, um, $40 million to build the Jack Davis statue, <laughs> um, because he didn't want to give a number, the fact is the state comes in and they're going to determine what is available for grant because the apportionment says that our construction cost per square foot in lower in Fairfield County isn't the same for other counties and so they have a standard course. They also will make sure that it's complying with certain things, certain things they may not want to pay for and we're going to build it anyway. So. They're going to come up with what's available for grant. So just because you hear a final number doesn't mean it's all grant money. And, that's, and, and if you really want to know who knows this really well, Kate Bush does. So she's very good on this. I think the goal she is to build a building. She has a few years in grade. Well, yeah, I'm not getting into <laughs> yeah. what that is. But, and know, I actually, um, I have, I, I, I left Bert in charge. I, and he doesn't want to be in charge for more than 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now to say back to the value Jack, engineering, the goal is to not... still want our committees not... to do our reports? Like Absolutely. Okay. I think that's essential. Okay. Um, people hear my voice far too often on that, and there's too many other high-level things that we're going to try and explain um, going down, because we want to talk about the changes, what the focus is, some of the other things. Oh, and... Um, we um, have requested the director of finance, although I'm not, I can't promise that we're going to have it, to be able to tell us what the future cost of bonding is in future years, we're associated with all of our bonding resolutions. That, that is that a would request. Be an estimate until the rates are set. Obviously, it's an right. estimate on rates yeah. and and the term yeah. of it, but yeah. it it gives you a guideline. I can tell you that at the end of next year, um, and the fiscal year 20, that the current outstanding, and I'm not sure whether or not this includes the $4 million that we just bonded, is outstanding will be about $47 million. Um, there's another $5 million that has been approved but not issued, so that brings us up to maybe about $52. Um, again, I don't know whether or not the $4 million we just issued is in that number. Um, but we're paying it down at about a $9 million clip a year. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of new people on the RTM. Yeah, but I want to educate them. They, um, need yeah, to be educated, they have to be I educated, agree. and we're going to, okay. FB is going to do the job right. that FB does. Okay. So, you know, I'll try not to have too much esoteric information. Anyway, thank you very Far much. Far be it from you, Jack, to do it. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Absolutely. Thanks.
I made extra copies of the warning just in case. I, I got that last part. Less esoteric information. <laughs> <laughs> it's now on the record. And, uh, okay. Approval of the um, uh, April first uh, minutes. Can I have a motion, please, to approve? So moved. A second, please. Uh, Since I took yeah. my hand second. <laughs> no, no, I, there was a hand. Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Uh, Joe. Joe. Joe moved. Um, corrections, additions, subtraction. No. Anything else? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Yes. Abstentions? See none? Thank you. They're approved. Um, assigning committees uh, for two new members, uh, District 2, uh, Richard Aponte, Aponte, excuse me. Um, I talked to uh, Monica, he, he, has a, he was on Public Works uh, before and um, has a unique background in, uh, in Public Works in that area. And he would, Heather, who he um, is replacing, who moved to uh, uh, Norwalk, was on TGSNA, and she was our third person on TGSNA. So we would go back to two on TGSNA and have the third person on Public Works. Okay, any discussion, thoughts about that? All right. And uh, so um, I'll take a motion to assign Richard Aponte to Public Works. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions, I see none. Uh, now, uh, for District 3, is it Connor, do you want to, or are you? Sure. Um, we were thinking that um, Francisco Cardona, who picked education as his top choice, but we ha already have, well, we had four, now we have three on education. So his second choice is planning and zoning, and we only have one on planning and zoning, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? I have a motion to appoint uh, Francisco Cardona to planning and zoning. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All, right. um, all in favor? Looks unanimous. Opposed? Abstentions? Don't see any. Good. Okay. Mr. Cardona is done. Um, moving on, pending items. Uh, Without objection, I would move the briefing on plastic bags up, because that way we won't have here have Monica here until uh, we get done with the rest of this agenda. That's all right uh, with everybody. Fine, um, Monica, good. and uh, ass ably assisted <laughs> by Frank. And Frank uh, was kind enough to um, make copies of the latest ordinance, and which will be the final ordinance. Um, since I was here last, we had a public hearing. At that hearing, we had 69 people attend. We had 20 people speak, 19 for the ordinance, one um, not for it. So in total, we have had 179 people attend public hearings. We've had 50 speakers, and we've had um, 74 letters sent in, 57 um, from, from various, from individuals and from um, groups, from businesses, etc. 57 were for the ordinance and 17 were not for the ordinance. We had a meeting on April 24th and we invited Wayne Fox to come. You know, he's our town council, as everyone knows. And he was, um, I asked him to specifically answer a few questions and then also um, to answer questions from um, our committee members. We also invited um, the other two committees, Public Health and Safety and TGSNA to attend, and our esteemed leader, Seth, also attended, and Joe. Uh -oh. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'll be careful with that. <laughs> um, so specifically, some of the questions actually originated from roles. One of them was the sales tax. I'm going to keep this really simple, and then if you have any questions, you can always call me or you can ask me right now. Yes, the 10 cents is subject to a sales tax. Terry Wood got back to Wayne that according to the Department of Revenue Services, these transactions would be subject. Um, 
He also discussed the liability issue for a volunteer. And just to clarify, it's because it's the gross. They right. tax the gross. Yes. So if I sell something to you for ten cent, for twelve cents, two cents of which is is is, is the uh, uh, fee or the deposit, uh, they just look at the gross and take the uh, sales tax on the gross. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you know that all this time? <laughs> I didn't remember that discussion. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm actually surprised that they could make it tax exempt because there are tax exempt items that you like to so it is tax exempt. So far. <laughs> right. Mm. Not to make it like more complicated. But <laughs> it is, you're it right. Is. We, we, it takes that, a, that would be takes the state would have to do yeah, that. Yeah. Pardon me to... for interrupting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and again, on the food issue, that's a, that's a, good, that's okay. a good question. I don't have the answer to that. Um, as far as the liability for having a town volunteer or an employee serve as the environmental compliance officer, um, that person does not have potential liability. They are protected under our insurance and held harmless unless they engage in fraud, criminal activity, malicious activity, that kind of thing. And the big question of the 10 cents charge, is that a tax or is that a fee? Is it legal? Uh, Mr. Fox has not changed his stance since the beginning of these discussions. The potential for litigation is still a possibility, and that is still a speculative um, thought. You no know, Connecticut court has ruled on it as a tax, and so it doesn't matter what we argue until a court actually rules, we won't know how that will turn out. Um, Wayne spoke for the first 50 minutes of the meeting on April 24th, and I strongly encourage anyone that has any questions regarding Mr. Fox's stance to watch the Public Works meeting, and I think that you will find um, your questions answered. Um, <clears throat> after that, we discussed the ordinance. There were a couple of other um, considerations. One was a few people have asked me about seniors and are they exempt. I did look into uh, the other ordinances in Connecticut, and there is no ordinance on the books that exempts seniors. We are not exempting them. They have um, been, um, the seniors have been reached by the BYO group, and I believe that if there are bags needed, they will be supplied to the seniors. And that would make sense because the plastic bags are easier for you to carry right? Um, just, you know, by hand. So, um, so we will take care of them. They will be taken care of. On the wording on the enforcement, some people thought that um, um, that was brought to my attention that it could possibly be um, confusing, but we reread it and it was unanimous that the wording um, will stand as it is. We made a motion to move the um, ordinance to the Rules Committee for consideration to be placed on the uh, May 20th agenda for the June 20th RTM meeting. That was unanimous. We made a motion to recommend passing the ordinance for the management of plastic and paper checkout bags in Darien by the full RTM. That vote was 6-4 uh, four and 4 opposed. The reasons for the four that were opposed were really fee-related. People felt it was unnecessary or there was the potential for litigation. Um, another voice was that peer pressure and cultural changes are moving quickly enough to address this issue now and that the fee is onerous. That's my mm -hmm. full report. Is it fair to say if the 10 cents was taken out of the ordinance, that whole thing that would have been unanimous? Um, that's a really tough question because mm -hmm. there are so, some people that feel very strongly about the fee. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's a rock and hard place kind of question, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think because, it's going to come up on the floor. Yes, I'm sure. <coughs> I, I, mm -hmm. I think you can, that's a fair assumption. Um, but they are, like I said, there are some people that are very, um, very pro the fee, feel that it really does change people's behavior and that it will keep people from just taking the paper bags. And the concept really is to have, you know, to encourage you to bring your own paper bag. So. Okay. 
Yes. Speaking of the bags, like I said before the meeting, um, I was at Stop and Shop the other day, and I noticed their plastic bags are completely different. They're more that, I guess, more recyclable Single material. Yeah. yeah. Do they <coughs> have to switch to paper bags, or it does it have to be a percentage of it must be you recyclable? Know, Is that the rule? It, um, a lot of ordinances don't include the um, compostable bags that you see once in a while. Single use, I guess. Yeah, so there, you know, so there's your typical single-use plastic bag, mm -hmm. that flimsy bag, mm -hmm. and then you could, some stores have offered a bag of that similar heft, but it's compostable. Right. But the reality is that it's not compostable in the majority of um, single-stream recycling, mm -hmm. and it doesn't com it doesn't compost quick enough to meet certain standards. So. Um, so some ordinances that have included that have actually turned around and written it back out. Mm -hmm. So, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So again, I would strongly suggest that if anyone has any interest in hearing more about Wayne's opinion before the RTM meeting, you will probably be able to get the majority of your questions answered, and I strongly suggest that you watch the Public Works April 24th meeting and he is the first 50 minutes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Monica. Great job. Nice going. And, um, we and obviously, we're not going to put this on the budget <laughs> docket. Uh, this is a meeting in itself, I think. <clears throat> so that'll be, we'll put this on June. Um, I got final, what I will call final, final documents from Wayne late today. As soon as I get them all assembled, I'll get them out to everybody on the Rules Committee and they'll be posted so that you can all see them and read them, and if you've got any comments, we'll do it. Uh, and uh, we also have one more meeting uh, where in May here where we'll uh, uh, put the item on the uh, June agenda for the RTM. And so if there are any feedback we want to give, um, there's an opportunity to do it. We do have time. Uh, <clears throat> it would be hard to believe there'd be be a lot given <laughs> the amount of work that's been put on, but you never know. Yeah, yeah Mac, thank yeah, you. Just uh, what happens if the state passes their own state encompassing, I don't know, is it called an ordinance at the state level or yeah. law? Yeah. Does, do, do we not move forward with ours? No, I, I think uh, it would depend upon what the state does, if anything. It's also a good argument for waiting until June, because mm -hmm. if we wait till June 10, um, the uh, legislature goes out, I think, on the 5th. So if they're going to do anything, they're going to do it before the RTM meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would have that in hand. And we have the ability to react, you know, if we have to. Uh, the way it's been looking, uh, the, the legislature's ideas seem to be a lot less restrictive than what we're doing. Yes. Uh, and there seems to be room allowing towns to do something more restrictive. So we'll see, you know. Um, I, think we're, I think we've got the timing about right, and be, I think it'll be good. good. And the question, hey? I think oh. we talked about this last time, so if for some reason they were to come out with a more restrictive one, the state did it, and more restrictive, you go to the higher level, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the meeting is June 10th, you're saying? Yeah. Our, our meeting RTM, is June 10th. Representative Town Meeting. Yeah, our, our, and our new one. Yeah. Our, our second one. Our and the state's um, shuts down on June 5th, so we'll know. Yeah. Good. But like, um, like it's been said, our our ordinance is at this time more restrictive, so it. Oh, that's good. Yes, so it could stand. One interesting thing on the state one though is that um, there, you know, there was a lot of questioning on who would um, enforce, and if the state writes the law, they will either deep, uh, Department of Energy, uh, deep, what is it? Deep Environmental energy. Protection. Yes, and, this, and the Consumer Protection. They could potentially be the enforcers for that, which would solve a problem for Connecticut. But that would only be if we didn't include a fee, if we just went with the state charter, with the state ordinance. So, so can I re, um, can I assume that we are not officially on the June tenth um, agenda? You won't be until we vote on it we, in we, May. Okay, we can't vote. You you won't vote. Okay, I just yeah, want I mean, to clarify that. Okay, can we jump I mean, ahead of it? Can we 
vote now? Should no, because we'll put the whole agenda together at okay. that time. And it, there's no rush. I mean, okay. we certainly have the opportunity, but no one, we haven't read the last set of documents that came forward. If we had any comments, I, you know, right. I think you'd want to hear about And you definitely, you know, feel free to read them, but they are the same as the last document you read. There's one small statute change that Wayne made. Otherwise, this, this version that you have is the 2.4. It is the yellow version that mm -hmm. we were handing out at the public hearing. Um, so, but. Great. Thank you for your Thanks. And, and th th thank you, but you know what? I thank my committee and I thank Frank and his committee and I thank Mac and his committee who've done a tremendous amount of work, have held a tremendous amount of meetings and um, have been very influential. Great record show that we had good leadership. Absolutely, there it is. Captured, Mr. Adeletta. Got it. Has it. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. I won't hold you here if, unless you have an, an overpowering desire to stay. Sure, I'll stay. Oh, all right, fine. Just like the old house. Yeah. All right. Yes. Not so long ago. Okay. Um, next item is just. Uh, uh, setting up the budget and uh, really assigning the committee to report out it's it's uh, the budget would be uh, I think finance and budget is the lead and then anybody else who wants to report uh, for any other committee um, so does that sound Right. Wait, are you talking one? about the budget in July 119? Yeah, the first item um, there. Is it doesn't education take the lead on the education side? Oh no, it's one big budget, but education. Yeah, um, it will be. Um, it will be. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can let's let's go ahead and split that out. Yeah, one second here. Just got to get myself on the right page. Unless I hand it out all the way. You all have one that says warning on the top of it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Except for me. <laughs> There we go. Handed them all out. That so from there. Okay, good. So um, thank you. Let's take it in pieces. Uh, the reserve fund. That's F and B. Right. The three million seven. Um, I, you know, obviously anybody else who wants to report could, but that's a straight finance link. Uh, selectman. Uh, primary would be uh, F and B, and then followed by you've got um, partner REC, uh, you know the whole whole group health, uh, health and social services. All of those committees could report out on that one because it's all that all comes under the selectmen. Um, uh, education uh, that would I I think do, do we decide that education subcommittee on something like that would be a lead would be the lead. That's what we did last year. Okay, so Ed is primary, and then uh, F and B plus others. Probably only those two primarily. We wouldn't expect any other of the committees to report out on it. Um, then uh, we would lump the other appropriations and make that F and B. That would be from the sewer operating fund through from the parking lot capital fund. And then uh, establishing uh, the mill rate, we always we do that separately, F and B, and authorizing the borrowing, uh, that would be F and B as well. And that takes care of that. So, um, can I? Did you get that, Mark? Okay. Uh, so, can I uh, have a motion on the town budget uh, to for those assignments, uh, Mark? Make a motion to approve those assignments as put forth by Mr. Morton. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Opposed. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. And abstentions, no. Yes, sir. I have a question. Right. Uh, Jack, who spoke to us a few minutes ago and dashed down for this board and F&B meeting, are these numbers we're looking at here 
placeholders, or are they working on those numbers? They, these, are the numbers. these are the numbers. These are the real numbers. numbers. What are they considering downstairs tonight? They're voting on the hey, same thing. Yeah. They're, they're voting on the they're same thing. They're voting on the same thing. They're voting on right. what they're going to recommend to the full RTM. Yeah. Or how they're going to do it. Right. And also it. how he's going to do the presentation. Right. It's right. Uh, yeah. fairly involved. Yeah. And he's trying to do it in a way that makes it easy to understand <coughs> and um, doesn't take too long. <laughs> okay, so uh, next we'll move to 19.8, um, refinan redoing the bonds, and that's F and B. Uh, 19, uh, I'll, I'll bunch these down to 19.12, I think. Uh, so we got F and B there, uh, 19.9, uh, Highland Farms. Um, this is a uh, financing thing, uh, but it, I don't think it precludes uh, Park and Rec having something to say. Mm -hmm. it's, it's usual that we have two when there's yeah. two different interests. So uh, we'll put Park and Rec second. Secondary on that. Um, anything on uh, Seth on that one? Yes. Is that that uh, being maintained by Public Works? Oh, okay. Right. Well, I'm just asking. I think it is, right? That's a yeah. Question. They may want to. Uh, no, it's actually no. being maintained by Parks and Rec. It's Parks and Rec. It's Parks and Rec. It's Parks and Rec. That came up at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Yeah. But it's under. It's not a designated park, is what you're saying. But it is Park and Rec. It is Parks and Rec. It's not Parks and Rec. Yeah, that's a great area. Yeah. That came up at the Board. Yeah. I stepped right in it, didn't I? Is your planning and zoning talk about it? Keep going, Mark. Should planning and zoning be getting to ask? We have had some kind of Okay, because sometimes I feel like I hear about it a lot out of there. Yeah. So park and rec and report. The roof replacement is a finance deal. That's F and B, because remember that that's a capital project, not a board of ed project. It's because they own the building. So I would think that's an F and B. Which one were we on? Six? And uh, I'm on nine, I went to 1910. 1910. We did uh, seven. We did F and B in Park and Rec. Okay. Eight. Uh, we did F and B. Um, nine. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of those little uh, projects. Um, I would just put F and B on that. The, of none of them Parks rise to the. There's four of them for $500,000. Yeah, are any of those? I'm trying to remember how I do it. It's just the way that they decided to pay for this stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's all the difference, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as it is. Yeah. yeah. Some of it's being carved out from the general fund because they got extra money. Yeah. So it's an F&B. And &B. the other's just straight bonding. Right. So they just decided how they were going to pay for it. So it yeah. some of Sounds pretty F&B-ish to me. Going, going, so, no. But, um, but Jeff did ask me to speak on a couple of these things. Do I not have to? No, you can. I think yeah. he wants backup on. I'll ask. Okay. Yeah, I'll okay. I'll ask. Okay. Yeah, it's the option. These are the assignments. It's the option. Anyone else? Anyone else? But at the any end of the when call call somebody gets done, okay. is there anybody else? Uh, can I? Can I yes, go back to, please. Go back to 1910. Should education speak about that as a secondary? They have or an no? option too. Yeah, you. Yeah, there's an option. Uh, well, they've been begging for the replacement <laughs> on that roof for they so want to long. Talk? Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, Seth, so correct me. Think. Any committee, subcommittee can speak on any of these, right. whether they're assigned. That's correct. To uh, we we have one not. that makes the motion, and that's the right. primary. Okay. After yeah. that, anybody can. But if there's somebody who we want to assign secondary, we can. Um, I, the Hindley School roof. I don't. I don't know. You'd be surprised by how somebody could. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I know they want it to be solar or they wanted something. Who knows what that thing is like. So, do you want to include it? What do you think, Barbara? <laughs> I, I, you I, wonder I, if you can't just talk about them all when you, like I said before, it's always right. a lot easier to just stand up there once. Actually, frankly, I don't remember us in. doing this in the past. Um, yeah, no. Well, to this degree, uh, Seth. This is true. I, I, I do recall. Well, we haven't. 
had in the past, it would stop yeah, exactly. at, at item six. <laughs> but we've got a whole yes. bunch of other, you know, so that's why this is Maybe that's what's looking doing. a little long. It is. It yeah. looked long when I made it up. <laughs> and then I, yeah. but we're, I, I don't expect a lot of long speeches on this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would I would go with F and B on the capital projects. I, I, I agree with you. The, my and sense is that to have F and B kind of lead on these, and then yeah, others. Yeah, choose if somebody to, has a driving urge, the doors open. Yep. Um, if you decided, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, if Teresa or somebody tied to the education committee decided that, that night that they wanted to speak, could they speak or do they have to be listed as a secondary? I think they can speak. No, no, I'm going to ask for you. Yeah. Even if we had them as a secondary, I'd still ask if there's anybody else yeah. just offhand right. who wanted to say something. The, because it's a big budget. night. This is, yeah. you know, we're talking mm -hmm. big numbers. Mm -hmm. well, what and they so are, you... They, you put, they pull these out of what was the capital budget. Right. right. You know, right. and so, for instance, Short Lane is in the appropriation for five hundred thousand dollars. So but I'm you know, I'm gonna talk about it one time. <laughs> right. All of it. <laughs> All right. My advice to everybody else is to do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get out of there faster. Will you talk about it earlier yeah. when you're talking yes. about Highland? Yes. I'm, no, I'm gonna talk about Highland and Short Lane. In one report. In one re in one report and just when, in general. And when will you do that? When she will talks about that? the education operating budget, is that what you're thinking or when I'm talking about the parking, when I get the parking okay. rec. Oh, parking rec. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Are we voting on each one of them individually, or are you going to package them as? Well? I, I'm doing them individually because we're talking them through, and they are different. I mean, they're different. Why? It's not like the, yeah, the budget. John Z did them separately. Yeah. The Board of financing. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. The the four <laughs> capital so projects I'm combining is one as F and B, and consideration action on the three million uh, F and B. Because it's a board of selectmen deal, really. All right, so just going back to six is F and B, seven is F and B and, and uh, Park and Rec. Well, I might, like I said, I might and just do it before set instead of doing it then. Where, so where do you think you'd want to do it? I'm going to do it when I speak on the, on, for Parks and Rec on the, the Selectman's budget. Can, oh. I, can I do that? All right. Yeah. Is it going to be too confusing? Okay. I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah, so maybe then take off. <laughs> <laughs> can we, can we not do it on the fly while yeah, I'm standing list, up there? Don't list, 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 list it as secondary. All right, fine. I'll list you as second, and then we'll say, well, I can always say, well, I was going to do Park and Rec secondary on this one, but they already spoke on it, so. Uh, so, I'll do so. <laughs> Whatever. So then we have. Sorry, uh, I'm making the trouble here. So we're putting it back in, aren't we? Second. Okay. You can always raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't keep uh, it. Item eight, F and B. Item nine, F and B. Item ten, F and B. Everybody got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I have a motion? Mark. Motion. From <laughs> six to ten. I'll make that motion. Okay, a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Opposed? I see none. Abstentions? I see none. It's unanimous. Nice going, everybody. That was it? That was the end. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the, uh, that's the uh, warning. Uh, and I think... Uh, where, where the, I had my, I'm just looking at my agenda. Oh, thank you very much. Just making sure I didn't miss it. So, um, what I would do, the next uh, item then is setting the agenda. Oh, well, no. At, just We did the plastic, status on plastic bags. Uh, just to say something on the shooter training, over half of the RTM has taken the, the training. I sent out a, a memo today telling everybody that half of the RTM has done it, and if you haven't done it, get out there and get it done because it's, it's, it's quite elucidating. And the, the, the feedback has been very positive, so it's something to go and do. Maybe not the pleasantest thought 
but it certainly is uh, something to listen to and, and to be knowledgeable about. So uh, that I have done. All right, uh, setting the agenda for uh, the May 13 meeting, we have this, and under this uh, warning, um, we could, uh, I would take a motion to approve this since we read it right off the, have you got, okay, then we'll give you, yeah, you've got a copy yeah, of it, great, and great. Up on it. So, um, do you want me to read it off, or do you want to just say, we'll, we'll take this agenda and, and uh, approve it? Okay, can I have a motion for the agenda? It's printed here on this draft sheet, thank you. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Patty? Second, please. Second. All in favor? Opposed? None. Abstentions, no. Great. Well, Any other business? Just yes. Just a question. Um, when we get to the, like the four capital projects, it's going to be laid out what they are, yes? Yeah. Okay. I will. What are they? <laughs> uh, I have them on my, uh, one second, I can it. look them up here on my computer one of those, if you want. One of those things that we got. $20,000 for short lane. Sidewalk oh. installation, road and ledge intersection design, short lane construction, and homes RTU replacement. There you are. RTU. 200000 for the new uh, sidewalk. Naroton Ledge intersection design, 175. Short lane is 50,000, and homes replacement 75,000. Total of 500. 500. Wonderful. Okay. Any other business? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Wow, the record. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, we, we, we have our thinking together pretty well. Second. So, congratulations. Uh, second, please. Second. All in favor, please rise. Nice. <laughs>